This lead code question is called Pascal's Triangle 2. It says given a non-negative index k where k is less than or equal to 33, return the kth index row of the Pascal's Triangle. Note that the row index starts from 0. So this is Pascal's Triangle. Every number is just derived from the two numbers above it. So this is the number 2, which is 1 plus 1. 3 is 1 plus 2. 3 here is 2 plus 1, and so on and so on. So in the example, we have an input of 3, and the output is 1, 3, 3, 1, because the row with the index of 3, so this is the row with the index of 0, 1, 2, 3, has the result 1, 3, 3, 1. All right, so this is Pascal's triangle. It's just a triangle made of numbers that are derived from the two numbers above them in the previous row. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 1 would give you 2, and so on and so on. So the two things to notice are, first, notice that the number of elements between the ones of each row is the same as the length of the previous row minus 1. So let's say that again. This last row has two elements between the ones, these two number threes. If you look at the row above it, it has three elements total. So if you do 3 minus 1, that'll give you the number of elements in the row you're on. All right, so another thing to notice is just the pattern. So let's say we're on this number three. This would be index one if we were in array. This would be index zero, this would be index two, and this would be index three. This number three that's on index one is made up of index zero and index one of the row above it. This number three, which is on index two, is made up of the elements in index one and index two above it. So they're made up of the same index in the row above it and the same index minus one of the row above it. All right, let's get to the code. We have a function called get row, which takes in a row index. Row index is just the row in Pascal's triangle they want us to return. So let's say we pass in row index 0. It would look like this. This would be the first row. Let's say we pass in row index 1. That would look like this. Also note that what we're actually returning is an array of numbers. All right, so let me just get rid of this and back to the code. So we need to create this array. Let row equal an empty array. What else do we know? We know that if the row index that we're passed in is a negative number, then that's not valid, so we'll just return the empty array. So if row index is less than zero, we'll just return row, which like I just said at this point, is just an empty array. Now what do we do? Anytime you see the number one in Pascal's triangle, we're actually just gonna add that manually. So at first we'll just add the number one to the triangle. In the next row, we'll add this number one and then complete the row. In this row, we'll add the number one, do whatever we need to do, and then add this number one. All right, so let me get rid of this. So we'll say row dot push the number one. So that adds the number one to the array. At this point, we look like this. Next, we need to create the actual rows. And the way we'll do that is using a for loop. So let i equal one. And we start at one, not zero, because we already have our zeroth row over here. So we'll say i is less than or equal to row index, and then i plus plus. 
So basically whatever row indexes, this for loop will loop that many times. If it's one, it'll loop once. If it's three, it'll loop three times, etc., etc. Next, we'll need a for loop that populates the elements in between our number ones. So let's say the row is one, two, one. This is the for loop that'll populate the number two. All right, let me just undo that. So we'll say for let j equal row dot length minus one. So we'll start from the right side of the row and go left. And then j is greater than zero. And then j minus minus. So j equals row dot length because of what we mentioned before. Let's say this is Pascal's triangle. It's populated up to this step just so we get a good sample. We know how many elements to put in between the ones by looking at the row previous to it and subtracting one. So the row above it has these two elements. So two minus one gives us one, which is the number of elements we need to populate in this row. The next row, it'll be one, three, three, one. And we could derive that using the same thing we just did. So the row above it has three elements. Three minus one is two. So we need to populate two elements in this row. All right, one quick clarification before we move on. I keep mentioning previous row as if there are multiple rows, but I'm only doing that to illustrate what is going on. But what's really happening is that we're only using one row and that one row gets transformed into what you would consider the next row. So when I say previous, I just mean the previous state of the row. So in this example, the row is just the number one. So imagine that being the previous row, but what it's going to become is this. So after it becomes that, we'll just consider this state of the row, the previous state before we change it to whatever its next state is. And we can get rid of this number one because that's not what the row looks like anymore. So let's just do one more example. The row one, one becomes the row one, two, one. What it was before was its previous state. So we'll get rid of that because that's not what the row looks like anymore. We'll just move this here because before the next iteration, this will be the previous state of the row. All right, let me just undo that to make it cleaner. Remember also that we derive every number from the two elements above it, meaning the element with the same index and the element with the same index minus one. So this three is at index one the elements that it's being derived from are at index one in the previous row and index one minus one, which is zero. Same thing for this one. Index two is derived from index two, which is the same index and index one. So from that we can say row j, which is the row we're on, equals row j minus 1 plus row j. So the same index plus the same index minus 1. And then how do we end each row? We have to manually add the number 1. Remember we've already manually added the number 1 at the beginning of the row in line 12 up here. So now what we have to do is we have to add another one to end the row. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. So let's say that the row index that was passed in was the number one, meaning we want the row that has an index of one. Right now, we only have the row with the index of zero. So how do we do that? 
let's look at the code that we've written. Starting at line 14, let i equals 1, i is less than or equal to row index. Well, if i is 1 and row index is 1, that means we'll enter this for loop. All right, so in the first and only loop of this for loop, what comes next? We have another for loop. This for loop is the one that actually populates the elements inside of the array. It says j equals row length minus one. Our row length right now is one. Minus one from that gives us zero. This loop will only be entered if j is greater than zero, which it's not. So this for loop was never entered. So what's the next line? It says row dot push one. So right now, we have our answer. It's the number one, one, which if we look back at Pascal's triangle is the row with the index of one. Let's do it one more time with the row index of two. So if we look at line 14 again, we've already gone through this for loop once. So now we'll go through it one more time, which will bring us to the for loop in line 15. So it says for let j equal row length minus one. Right now, the row length is two. Two minus one is one. So this for loop will run one time. And what does it do? It says row j. So that would be pointing to this. We have to make it equal to whatever it is now plus the element in front of it. What it is now is the number one and the element in front of it is equal to the number one also. So this will change to the number two. And get rid of those. Then what happens? That for loop is broken out of and we get to line 18, which is row dot push one. All right, so the only thing left to do is after those are populated, we now just return row, which is the row we just created. So now let's run the code. Looks good, submit. All right, so we have our solution. It was faster than about 15% of JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.